Now, one of the things that I've said in the past that I like, really enjoy watching, um, were the Steve McRae atheist agnostic <laughs> definition wars. Um, what what is actually going on underneath the surface? Why are the people who fight Steve McRae being so insistent and dogmatic? that he used their terminology, because that's generally how the arguments go. As far as my understanding is, now I haven't watched him in a long time, but I used to watch him all the time. Steve is, is, understands that there's a colloquial definition of the word atheism, and we all understand that all atheism means a lack of belief in God. We just don't think the term is specific enough. And there are really good reasons for not thinking the term is specific enough. The discussion that we are having, theist versus atheist, is ultimately about the proposition God exists. The opposite of the proposition God exists is not, I just lack a belief in God, it's God does not exist. That's what we're ultimately talking about. What's true? Does God exist or does God not exist? We aren't ultimately talking about what you personally believe. All I believe, all I mean a lack of belief in God. Okay, nobody really cares what you believe. This is something that a huge group of people in the atheist community are forever getting wrong. They're conflating ontology with belief. Okay, Your beliefs are only relevant insofar as they correspond to reality. Outside of that, why do we care what you believe? We don't. And the only reason we care and we can decide if your beliefs personally, whatever they may be, I believe the world is flat, is I believe the world is round. Do you have good evidence, good justification for the things that you actually believe? There isn't a cop-out phrase. <laughs> there isn't a cop-out part. Well, I don't have to participate at all. It's, uh, as I've explained by analogy, this is what the lactiists are trying to do. You are trying to, usually trying, and not all of them, some of them actually really, really do have a soft version of atheism where they just lack a belief because they've never like experience God in prayer or something like that. But you would expect those people to be categorically less dogmatic than the ironically and paradoxically really, really, really intensely dogmatic tribal loyalists who are actually using the, the, the thing, the, the label lack theist. There are genuine lack theists out there. You would expect them to be someone like Brett I've used in the past or um, Adam Friended, people who just kind of sort of don't believe in God. Okay, but they act accordingly. Their behavior corresponds to that fact. They'll be like, you know, if you give me something to believe in, maybe I will believe. But there aren't tribal loyalists really dogmatic, and that first of all, they don't insist on using the lactiest definition. I just think it fits them a little better. The people who use the lactiest definition are usually tribal loyalists, and usually it's a dodge for what they actually believe. What they actually believe, if you get them to honestly talk about it, is God does not exist. They just refuse to justify the proposition. They refuse to make a positive case for atheism. Why? Because they want to win debates. That's it. They want to have it easier for them to win debates on Twitter by cheating, by not really defending. The only, again, going back to the actual beliefs themselves, beliefs are borderline irrelevant. What is relevant is ontology. The only reason we should care about your beliefs or any beliefs there's only one relevant question. Do they correspond to reality? Other than that, we don't care what you believe. And the only way we can know if they correspond to reality is do you have solid justification for the thing you believe? Consider, if, if I were having debates, I've said this before, but this is a really good analogy to think about. If you, had a, a, if you were a committed liberal, and your friend, the committed hardcore conservative, was coming over for dinner, and you were going to discuss politics, would you him, allow him to only ask, ask you questions the entire conversation? To put you back on your heels? Explain to me defund the police movement. Explain to me AOC. Explain to me what the open borders. Why, do you, why aren't you closing down the borders? Explain to me how old Joe, Joe Biden is. Yada, yada, yada. No, eventually, if it were a real dialogue, you would stop that and you defend a little bit and then you go, okay, tell me about Trump's tweets. They were so bad. Or whatever. <laughs> you eventually you would flip the dialogue back and they would have to defend some of their position. That's called the real dialogue. Out here in Twitter, why people are adopting, for the most part, 
For the most part, this is true. There are some people who actually just lack a belief in God. But like I said, their behavior should correspond to that. They shouldn't be all that dogmatic and they shouldn't be evangelical, in-your-face, aggressive atheists. The paradox is the ones who are adopting this, all it means is a lack of belief in God, and defending it tooth and nail against Steve, who acknowledges, as far as I can tell, that there is such a thing as a colloquial definition of atheism. He's just saying it isn't useful. He acknowledges that there is one because there is one. Just saying it isn't accurate or useful, which it isn't. And it's only being used as a chew toy and a crutch for you to dodge and not engage in meaningful conversations. So you don't have to defend any of the things you actually believe or look for rational justifications for the things you actually believe, which tend to, if you really, really examined it closely, be that God does not exist. Most of the people who are calling themselves lactheists, the ones who are defending it, are tribal loyalists, really, really committed atheists, dogmatic atheists, the type of atheists who get in your face and only, de only to debunk, dismiss, and discredit you. And the reason why they're adopting the lactheist label, usually, now this isn't true of everybody, there are different types of atheists out there. The philosophical atheist, for example, is a different type of atheist. Generally speaking, they're a lot easier to engage with and they're a lot more honest and they're a lot more philosophical. And there's plenty of examples of them out there on Twitter. But they usually reject the lactheist definition. Why? Because it isn't useful. They don't care about winning fake debates on Twitter. And neither should you, even if on the Christian side. Why? Because nobody should. Nobody cares who wins fake debates on Twitter. If you are adopting a lactheist definition just so you can put a Christian back on their heels so they have to answer your questions in, through the entire exchange, because that's usually what's going on, Christians, you should stop allowing them to do it. Take away the chew toy. Take away the chew toy. Just don't participate. That's it. Say, look, there are philosophical out atheists out there. People were willing to make a positive case for atheism. What's the matter with you, Junior? Either grow up or go home. Tell them straight up. This isn't just about me trying to prove to you that God exists. You're going to have to try and make, at least somewhat in this exchange, a positive case for either atheism, a positive case for either naturalism, a positive case for either philosophical materialism or philosophical naturalism. You're going to have to do some defending of your beliefs and your worldview, or this isn't a real conversation, this isn't a real dialogue, I don't want to participate. Grow up or go home. Tell them straight up. That's how I think this gets resolved. I, I, go watch the dialogues between Steve and these guys. They're the dogmatic ones. Steve acknowledges that there is a colloquial definition of atheism. The thing that makes make, why they get frustrated with Steve is that he doesn't care who wins the debates out there on the atheist experience and out there on Twitterverse. He cares about what's true. And that's exactly how everybody should be approaching these questions. You should not care who wins fake debates. You should care what's true. And if you're an atheist, you should be able to make a positive case for atheism. You can't, that should tell you something. Hmm, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> it's not just about you putting me back on my heels through the entire exchange. That's what you want it to be about. That should tell you something too. Hmm, maybe I don't have a good reason to believe that God does not exist. Well, I don't actually believe that God does not exist, Craig. I just like a belief in God. You see? There you go again. You're so used to training yourself to take an easy way out, a non-committal, for reasons that are dubious. That's the point. You aren't doing them because they are, they, they are you aren't doing them for, for, for high motivational reasons. They're, you aren't being more high-minded. The people who are doing it are usually being dubious. First of all, it doesn't correspond to their actual core beliefs, which usually is really strongly God does not exist. So if you, you do the check yourself, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. Most of the atheists who listen to my channel don't do this stuff. They aren't in the business of just having fake debates. They don't do it at all. Just people like JB, they don't, they don't, they're not engaged in fake debates at all. They're trying to actually, you know, work out what they honestly believe and work out what's true. I respect that. You can be an atheist and still be honest and be trying to work out what you honestly believe. You'll be a lot better served. A lot better served by trying to make a positive case for examining the proposition as a standalone proposition, God does not exist, and seeing if you can actually rationally justify that, make a positive case for atheism. If you can, which is going to be hard for you to do, 
Partially because nobody in the atheist land is, very few people actually do it. You can go look, there's thousands of Christians trying to make, you know, arguments, proofs of God's existence. There's almost no, almost no positive cases for atheism out there. There's a handful. If you're an atheist listening to me, you are far better served by finding, figuring out what you actually believe. What you actually believe. Now, this is why the Santa Claus analogy that Braxton Hunter talked about was pretty useful. Because that's the tell right there. If you're one of these people who say atheism is, you know, God belief is something akin to Santa Claus, it's just obviously ridiculous and nobody ever believes it, okay, then you really strongly believe that God does not exist. So you should own that proposition and try to stand on that proposition. First of all, be a humbling experience. Maybe you realize that you really honestly don't believe it all that strongly. Why else would you take an easy... To, is there anybody alive? Anybody on earth? If you ask somebody, do you believe in Santa Claus? Go, no, I like a belief in Santa Claus. Anybody would answer you like that. Do you now understand how ludicrous it actually is? If I ask you, do you believe in Santa Claus? Do you know how ridiculous you would sound? You say, well, all, all Todd's believing in Santa Claus means is I like a belief in Santa Claus. No, I just lack a belief in Santa Claus. No, you would immediately say Santa Claus does not exist. I say, you're going to have to, you're going to have to prove that. You go, oh, okay. <laughs> all right, then I'll prove that. If you are, if you are adopting the lack theist definition as a dodge, be aware that you're adopting it as a dodge. To not engage in a meaningful conversation where you put none of your core beliefs on the table and try to defend them. That's something you should be doing all the time. Why? Because it serves you to do that. Makes you stronger, makes you smarter. Atheists love to talk about what great critical thinkers you are. Ain't wrong. You aren't. Most of you are lousy. There's a handful of you that are good. Most of the rest of you are awful at it. Why? Because you don't do it. You did it 15 years ago to deconstruct. And then you stop doing it. You adopt a lazy definition of atheism, so you just engage in a Twitter conversation where you're just trying to put a Christian back on his heels, and you move them to the least convincing aspect of Christianity routinely. Hello? <laughs> Does that sound familiar? Routinely move them to the least convincing aspect of Christianity, which is also a mistake on your part. You should be steel-manning the Christian moving them to the strongest possible argument that they can make. Why? Because that's what critical thinkers actually do. That's what people who care what's true actually do. That's people who want to make themselves smarter and more precise do. The rest of it is just lazy. You just want to win a fake Twitter debate for no particularly good reason. A reality check, guys. Nobody cares. Nobody even knows. Real reality check. I've talked about Steve debates. Okay, I watched a bunch of his debates. How many of you have actually watched him and know who won the debates? Nobody. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> Nobody even knows who wins the fake Twitter debates. Nobody even knows. Every once in a rare while is there some sort of like, wow, that guy really nailed that guy on Twitter. And then you even forget who that guy was and who the guy nailed. Nobody cares who wins fake Twitter debates. There is nothing you are serving for yourself if you are an atheist. You should be like the philosophical atheists. Why? They're better, stronger, faster, smarter. They're better atheists. They are. And they're better behaved. <laughs> I swear to God, they are. Most of, the, most of them are pretty chill. I can name names, you know, start with Emerson Green. He was on my channel. There's a bunch of them. You know, I don't know all, all the ones and how chill they may be. But atheology, um, there's a lot. You know, I'll start putting the top shelf atheists in there too, but those guys are a little different. Philosophical atheists, for the most part, are better, stronger, faster, smarter. You can put T-Jump in there, sort of. When he's not doing certain T-Jumpisms, he can be uh, a philosophical atheist. There's a bunch of them. I'm not going to name names. But, just know, if you're an atheist, and you're, you're a lack theist, they're better, smarter, faster, stronger than you. They, would, they, they, they will win debates against you for sure. Why? Because they actually think about what they believe and they care about making positive cases. The lacteists are sloppy and lazy and basically a pack of idiots for the most part. For the most part, once you get past the, like, the smart set of atheists, the rest of these guys that you see in these streams, pack of idiots. They don't understand the arguments half the time. They just know that theists are stupid. That's it. That's how theists is. Theists are talking about science. Oh my God, theists are so stupid. They don't ask them, about to, ask them to find the hard problem of consciousness. They don't even know what it is. I swear to God, they don't. 
I swear to God, they'll make fun of someone like Eric Hernandez and they won't understand his arguments at all. I swear to God, I've seen that happen. So, if you're an atheist, not calling you out specifically, I don't know if you're a lactheist or not. If you are a lactheist, ask yourself why. Do I generally have a small, like, you know, do I generally just kind of not really care and I'm not really all that convinced? Because your behavior should correspond with that. If you have a YouTube channel, then you aren't that. <laughs> if you do apologetics and you counter apologetics and you engage in debates with Christian all the time, then you aren't that. So you should try to become a philosophical atheist. Why? Because they're better, stronger, faster, smarter. They're better behaved and they know what they're talking about a lot better. And they're able to some degree to make positive cases for atheism or positive cases for naturalism. They don't just rely on a stupid crutch to win a fake Twitter debate. The rats what the rest of these guys do. It's idiot land. And it shows, to tell you the God's honest truth, you guys give yourself credit for being the smart set. You should stop doing that. Why? Because from where I'm looking, you ain't. As I said, I, many of the time, there are a lot of smart people in the atheist community. Once you get past them, the rest are a pack of imbeciles. And they don't understand the arguments at all, and it shows. I watch the, the live chats all the time on atheist channels. And I read the comments. And what, you know, there are smart guys like Camille Greger, some of the guys on Nathan's channel. The guy who streams with James, a bright guy. Camille's pretty bright. Mind Onion. I don't know if anybody even knows these people are. You see, pretty bright, study quantum mechanics. There's a couple, a handful of first rate intellects in the atheist community. Once you get past them, uh uh. Uh uh. You may be one step, step ahead of the Noah's Ark Christians. That ain't saying a whole hell of a lot. It's not saying anything at all, actually. <laughs> one step ahead of the, of the dumbest Christians, Greg. Okay, good for you. It's not saying anything at all. And part of the reason why you are so not that intelligent is because you are lazy with your... You don't really care. You don't really care about what's true. You don't even know the philosophical arguments. You're trying to act like Aaron Ra rather than uh, Graham Oppie. Your role model is Aaron Ra. Even if that's not your actual role model, it shows. So, make your role model Graham Oppie. Try to adopt a positive case for naturalism or a positive case for atheism. Do not care who wins fake Twitter debates. Why? Nobody actually does. You don't believe me? Ask one of your good friends. Who won the debate last week? <laughs> to name two names of people who debated. Do, do this little experiment. Do this little experiment. Watch a Twitter debate today and remember who debated, a Christian and atheist. And ask your friend, one of your people you know, 10 days from now, who won. Tell them to watch and ask them who won. They, 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 well, those two debated? Yeah, you don't remember? That's exactly what will happen. Why? Because nobody actually cares who wins the debate. The only reason most of the, most of the atheists, why they fight T Steve tooth and nail, I swear to God they fight him tooth and nail. He willingly acknowledges as a colloquial definition of atheism. They're saying that the colloquial definition is the only one you have to use. Why? Because it's easier for us to win debates. They don't come right out and say that, but that's exactly why. It's easier for us to win debates. It's really easy to win a debate if you, if you define atheism as lack of belief of God. Why? Because you don't have to rationally justify the proposition God does not exist at all. You don't have to rationally justify any of the things you believe. All you have to do is just skeptic and keep skepticing. I just don't believe you. All it means is a lack of belief. All it means I don't believe you. So you assign to, the, to whoever your interlocutor is, whoever your opponent is, or your debate, the person you're engaging with, the burden of proof for the entire engagement. And then find them, I'm not convinced. <laughs> it's really easy. That's why they do it. Because they'd rather win fake Twitter debates than actually, you know, really defend the things that they supposedly passionately believe in. Passionately care about. Supposedly you passionately care about truth, right? That's why, why a lot of you said you became an atheist. Okay, then put your money where your mouth is. Adopt the far more challenging and cerebral and appropriate definition. Again. Think of it in terms of ontology. Nobody actually cares what anybody believes at all. Period. The only, if you tell me I believe X, I don't care. And neither does anybody else. The only reason we could be convinced to care is because your belief may correspond to reality. And in order for us to decide that, you'd have to present evidence and you'd have to give us a well thought out, rational justification for the thing you believe. That's the only way we could decide if it corresponds to reality. 
Other than that, the thing you believe is totally inconsequential and irrelevant. When we are talking atheist versus theism, there is, there is one thing being discussed that is of consequence and relevant. The proposition, God exists. Again, its opposite is not, I just lack a belief. <laughs> it's not the opposite proposition. The opposite proposition is, God does not exist. Those are the two propositions in play. Those are the only two relevant propositions under discussion. Where you stand in your, in your like, personal relationship to those propositions is not the relevant detail. And if you have adopted that label, you know, again, this isn't true of everyone who uses the lactheus definition. Some people just, you know, they, they're new to the space or whatever. They just, I'm not a Christian anymore because I'm not sure if I believe in God. Okay, some of those people, that's fine for them to adopt a colloquial definition for temporarily. It's fine. And I'm not saying there's any necessarily wrong to do it. What I'm saying is that most of the people who defend that definition have reasons that are dubious. Because it's easy to go out and win a Twitter debate if all, all it means is a lack of belief in God. Why? Because you don't have to put any of your beliefs on the table and justify any of them. The entire conversation can be you putting somebody back on their heels for the entire exchange. Now, just so we're clear, you should not want to be doing that. <laughs> that shouldn't be your goal. Like I said, nobody cares who wins fake to put your debates. They don't. Nobody even knows. So if you're getting some temporary sense of satisfaction, oh, I showed that Christian that he's got nothing. Okay, you shouldn't be all that gleeful about it. You aren't accomplishing anything. So like I said, the philosophical atheists are accomplishing stuff. As a general rule, they're better, smarter, faster, stronger. Period. And it, it shows. The big difference between Graham Oppie and Aaron Ra, guys. <laughs> big difference, I swear to God. I swear to God there's a big difference. And go watch. I'll, 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 Aaron Ra was in that, that, that you know, an hour-long thing with the three Muslim guys. I'll, de I'll debate that. I mean, not debate that. I'll analyze that in one of my videos to come. And you'll, you'll see the difference. If Graham Oppie were in that same conversation, it would have gone a lot differently. Why? Because he is training himself as a philosophical atheist. Challenging himself to really think clearly about the things that he believes. He's not just adopting convenient gimmicks to basically get out of a conversation really quickly, having scored some points for atheism. Oh boy! That's what the, most of the people who call themselves lactheists are trying to do. It's not true of everyone. Like I said, there's some people who just recently became an atheist and they're not really sure, so they adopt that label, fine. Fair enough, harmless. But most of the people who adopt that label are doing it for those reasons. So that they can conveniently sidestep any meaningful dialogue, conveniently sidestep any justification for the things they believe, engage in these quick sort of stupid, pointless conversations with theists, where they, look, see? Look, see how much I put Stephanie back on her heels? And then walk away. That's it. That's why they're doing it, guys. Swear to God, that's a huge chunk of why most of them are doing it. That's why they fight Steve so much. He's offered them the out. I understand there's a colloquial definition. I just don't think he should use it. I think he's even said those. I don't know if he said those exact words, but it wouldn't surprise me if he said those exact words. I understand that there is a colloquial definition. I do not think it is precise, nor is it as helpful in actual discovering the truth behind the ontological claims being discussed. I'm not sure if he said those exact words, but it wouldn't surprise me if he said those exact words. The only proper answer to that should be, okay, fair enough. <laughs> I don't want to switch my, def my colloquial definition, though. Why? Because I, I use direct questions. Because I use the score fake points, dude. <laughs> You're taking away my true toy, and I'm not giving it to you. Probably with the only, that's the only real answer. It's the only real answer, whether the only answer or not. So, anyways... Um, I don't know if you disagree with me. I just made this video on a whim, just watching one of these, one of these back and forth. So, you know, maybe I didn't say everything perfectly. I doubt that, but maybe not. So, if you got something disagree with me on something I said, let's hear what you have to say. Um, I'm pretty sure I nailed the essentials of what's going on with that particular, with that particular dynamic in this space. I'm pretty sure that's at essence what's really going on, but. I will take another look and go back to the subject again on another day. That is all for now, kids. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen.